the receive Vishesh Sanskar. Very intense impression in the heart. And this intense impression it manifests a sadha, Shastriya sadha, faith in the scriptures. Krishna is to Bhagavan Swayam. Krishna is the Supreme Personality of God. Ishwaraha Paramaha Krishna Sachit Ananda Bigraha Anadi Radi Govinda Savakarna Karanam. The Supreme Controller is Sri Krishna. And he is Sachidananda Bigraha. Bigraha means the form of Sat, eternal existence. Chit is full consciousness and Ananda blissfulness. So, this is very significant because in this world, uh, you and your physical form are two different things. They are not the same. The essence of you, that means you, is the Atma. But now that Atma is identifying with, due to the influence of ignorance, the availability of Maya, the material body. So, this difference is not there in Krishna. See, Krishna is the Sat Vigraha, Chit Vigraha, Ananda Vigraha. Sat Vigraha means his form is his existence. No difference at all. Deha Dehi Vibhago Yam Neshare Vitite Kochit. In the Kurma Purana, it is said, in the case of the Supreme Lord, there is never any difference between Deha and Dehi. Deha means body, and Dehi means the person who is embodied in that body. So, in the Danta Sutra, it is said, Arupavad Evahi Tatpratana. The meaning is Arupavad Evahi Evahi Certainly The Supreme Lord Or the Supreme Brahman Is Arup hmm? No form Arup means form Arup means no form he is a Rupavad. Mm. He does not have a form. You will say, well, how is it possible? I thought you told me that God has a form. No, he does not have a form. He is his form. Arupavad eva hita pravana tat. Arupavad. He, what means? Tulya. Um, like. He is not like a form. Mm. He is his form. Mm. So, when a living being develops sort of faith, it is faith that God has a form. And He appears in this world in that, faith, in that Vigraha, in the special form that is called the Archa Vigraha. The Vigraha, the form, uh, who appears uh, to accept our archan, our worship. V means here, V 
cliches, especially graha, to accept. Especially to accept our service, Krishna has appeared. Because in our conditioned state, we cannot see God. He is Indriya Atit. He is beyond our senses. So Supreme Lord appears in a form which we can uh, perceive with our senses. We can come before the Lord. We can offer Him clothing, ornaments, bathe Him, decorate Him, offer food. So that is called Bigra. In any religion where there is no conception of God having a form, then there must be, it must be rampant with materialism. And you'll see it. In any religion, in any religious conception, where they think God has no form, their whole focus is on this world. What can God do for me here? I'll call him. He's like Amazon, he can deliver whatever I want. <laughs> if God has no form, then mm, there's no uh, chance to serve and interact. You cannot interact lovingly and serve a person who has no form. In fact, it's debatable whether someone who has no form is even a person. Mm? So, Srila Bhaktanata Kaurin Jaiva Dharma said that the spiritual life begins when we have Paramatik Shraddha, that is a transcendental faith that has come from Satu Sangha, and that person, he may have so many faults, mm? but he believes one thing, the deity is Krishna. Krishna is God and God has a form and he can appear in a form that can accept our service. And that is the start of the uh, spiritual life. For those in Vaidimark, gradually they can progress. They have proper guidance to the Ragamark. So, where there is impersonalism, then people become very materialistic. Sil Prabhupada has said that in a religion, if there's no experience of a relationship, reciprocation and interaction with a personal spiritual being, the Supreme Lord, then what is that religion? If someone is just talking, talking, maybe there's something out there somewhere or other. This is not religion. In, for a religion to exist, there must be someone who is directly interacting with the personality of God. Otherwise, everyone is just theorizing. So, impersonalism is, uh, and the desire for liberation, to get impersonal liberation, is called Kaitaka Pradhan, the most uh, cheating of all religions. If people are came into religious but they have no experience of God, then this is just cheating. But if someone is claiming that God is, there is no God, or rather the truth is impersonal, and we have to merge with that, that is, Mahaprabhu said, Kaitava Pradhan, the most cheating uh, conception of all. Because then there's no chance of relationship, no chance of service. And even though the world is right before your eyes, you are denying that it really exists and just saying it's, uh, it doesn't really exist, it's all an illusion. This impersonalism is completely dark of the road against all reason. Why? If you ask, how is it that this world is an illusion? They'll say, oh, it's just like this. It's a vivarta. Vivarta means a bewilderment, illusion. If in a dark place you see a rope,
hanging on a tree. But in the dark you think it's a snake. Then you feel fear. So, in the same way, just as that's, there's no snake there at all, but only you think there's a snake there. So in the same way, there is only Brahman, but you are, made, you are having the vivarta, the bewilderment, and thinking, oh, this, it is this material world, and you are feeling fear and suffering. So the way to get liberation from all suffering is to become free from that illusion and be established in the knowledge that only the light of Brahman is true. So this is their theory, Vivartavad. Now, for them we have four questions. The first question is, if only Brahman exists, then who is experiencing Vivarta? Who is confused? If only Brahman exists, then who, who is confused? Then you have to say Brahman is confused. Brahman is an illusion, then the illusion is greater than Brahman. Then he is not Brahman anymore. Or it is not Brahman. What? Even if one person, you can say, gets liberation, what does that mean? That one part of Brahman was liberated and the other parts of Brahman are still here. But I thought that Brahman was Akanda, indivisible, and doesn't have any parts. It's near Vishesh, near Akar. No form, no parts, not divisible. So the first question we ask is, who is confused? Who is in Vivarta? Who is? Eh? And so if only Brahman exists, then it can only be Brahman, but that makes no sense whatsoever. Okay, we say, all right, I accept that this makes no sense whatsoever, but just let's, for argument's sake, accept that Brahman is in illusion. He is the subject of illusion. So what's the object of illusion? What is Brahman seeing that he's making a mistake about? Right? If you see a rope, you mistake it for a snake. So if Brahman is in illusion, he's the subject of the, what's the object of illusion? Because you can't go into illusion without mistaking one thing for another. That's the second question. So if only Brahman exists, then there's nothing for Brahman to see, to be confused about. Second question. Then third question is the reason a person experiences illusion when they mistake a rope for a snake is because there's a similarity between the snake and the rope. If there were no similarity, then you would not make a mistake. If you saw a rope hanging from a tree, you would not look at the oh, is that a cow? Right? Because there's no similarity. So, what is, if we are mistaking Brahman for this world, what's the similarity between the world and Brahman? Nothing, because the world is full of forms and Brahman has no form. Hmm? And then, the last thing is, okay, if we give you three miracles, one, that Brahman can be an illusion, the Brahman can be confused, Two, that there's something else that exists that he can be confused about. Three, that something which has no form whatsoever could be mistaken for something which is full of forms and colors and sounds and everything. Okay? We'll give you three miracles. Hmm? Now the fourth question is, if Brahman and the world are so similar that a person can mistake one for the other, then you should be able to mistake it the other way around too. Right? Let's say in the dark you saw a snake hanging from a tree. You could mistake it for a rope. Hmm? So if you can mistake Brahman for the world, by just by accident, by chance, also by chance, you could also mistake the world for Brahman. Hmm? Oh, what's that? Oh, it's Brahman. Hmm? And you became enlightened by accident. You became a Paramahamsa Mukta Mahaparush. Chidananda Saraswati. Bhattacharya. You became a great Mayavadi Acharya. Hmm? By accident. Hmm? Is it possible? Okay, so now you understand that how impersonalism is dark of the road, completely against any uh, reasonable, reasonable person's idea. So it should be understood. Hmm? According to Satkaryavad, 
that is the theory that the effects are latent in the cause, that because the world has form, the world has form, because the Supreme Lord from whom it came has form. The absolute truth is that from which this world has come. The world is real but it's temporary and it has forms because those forms are like, as we discussed this morning, it's like a reflection. World is a, the material world is a reflection of the spiritual world. So, the Supreme Lord is, in, in the Vedas it says, Parabrahmanarakati, the Supreme Truth, has a form like a human being. Or rather we can say that our human forms are like God's forms. Because He's first, He's the origin. So, by Sadhu Sangha, we develop some shraddha faith in the deity and in Guru. Archayam evahareye pujam yasadeyate natar bhakteshu chanyeshu sabhakta prakrita smritaha the first level of a devotee who is still has materialistic consciousness, still has Pramadra, Vipra, Lipsa, Karnapata, he has these things. He's not free from the Anartas yet. But by Sadhu Sangha, Archa Meva Haraye Pujamya Swatayate, he has a faith. Oh, Takoji is God. Sivadha Ramanga Laki Jai, all the deities of Vrindavan, or whenever Sri Krishna appears, that is Vrindavan. So, this is really Krishna himself appearing to accept our Seva. Now, this morning we were discussing how, why does a person go into the state of birth, bewilderment? Due to indifference to God. Bahimukata. His vimuk. His consciousness is turned away from the Supreme Lord. So the only way to become come out of Maya is to turn the consciousness towards the Lord. And that is what Bhakti is. Bhakti means by Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Sparanam, Pada, Sevanam, Achamanam, Dasam, Sakyam, Atmanivayanam, by all the practices, hearing, chanting, remembering, serving the deity, offering prayers, what are we doing? They all, all these practices have something in common. That is, turning our attention towards the Supreme Lord, by which the influence of Maya goes away. So, in Srimad Bhagavatam it is said, and Mahaprabhu has taught to start in Goswami Bhagavad. Bhayam dvitya abhidi veshatasya ishada peitasya vipariya smriti tanmayata upada avajitam bhaktyayika esham guru devata atma Bhayam, in this world we experience fear, anxiety, lust, anger, greed, all types of difficulties. Why? Dvitya abhidi vesh because we have abhidi vesh, absorption in the Dvandva. We have Pratak Drishti. Something is separate from God. We've been discussing the difference between Advaya Gyan, Supreme Lord, and being in the state of uh, Dvandva. Dvandva Mohina. Bewildered by uh, dualities. And why is he bewildered by dualities? Ishada Vaitasya. That person is one who, who is Ishad apetas to turn away from God. So then, how can he come out of Maya? He's turned away from God, then Vipariya Smriti. He's, uh, by the influence of Maya, he now experienced Vipariya. That means ignorance, avidya, asmita, ego, ra, dvesha, vinivesh, attachments and aversions. So how can he come out? He'll have to turn back towards the Supreme Lord. But, he cannot see the Supreme Lord anyway. Everywhere he looks, no God, no God. So what can he do? So Supreme Lord has appeared as Vigraha. Mm -hmm. But, for the conditioned soul, the Vigraha is not so entertaining. <laughs> huh? Only the beauty 
coaches can sit down in front of their vigraha for hours and they're endless. Everyone else will sit down in front of the television. Because right? it's moving, the sound, and things are happening. But here, yeah, not so much. So, Bhaktaikesham Guru Deva Tatma means to turn the consciousness to God. One has to have one pointed devotion to Krishna in his form as Sri Guru. The disciple looks at his Guru. If he will think, oh, Guru Dev, he is a very learned person. He knows all Shastra and Siddhanta. Then that disciple will not make any progress in spiritual life. Yasa Sakshat Bhagavati Jnana Deepa Prade Guru Machasat Di Sutam Tasya Saravam Kunjara Sochabat the Guru who gives the transcendental knowledge to the disciple, the Gyan Deep, the, the, the torch, light, the lamp of spiritual knowledge, Yasa Sakshat Bhagavati, that is directly form of the Supreme Lord. Supreme Lord is everywhere, so he can appear through a Vaishnava. He can appear as the deity in his own Swarup. And Krishna Guru, Krishna, Guru Rupa Aya Shastra Pramane Guru Rupa Krishna Kripa Karim Bhakta Gane Guru Krishna Rup The Guru is also one form of Krishna because this form in the beginning will not talk to us so much. So Gurudev see Krishna appears in the form of Gurudev to talk to us and explain who is Krishna so we are singing every morning Sakshat Haritvaina Samasta Shastre Uptas Tata Bhavyata Eva Sadvihi Kintu Prabhoya Priya Eva Tasya Vande Guru Sri Charna Ravinda All the scriptures and all the saints have declared Sakshat Haritvaina Sri Guru is directly Supreme Lord Hari himself Kintu Prabhoya Priya Eva Tasya But he is the very dear servant of Krishna he is one with Krishna because he is Krishna's dear servant and he is a transparent via media. Just like someone can speak to you through the glass window. So see Krishna speaks to you through the transparent, transparent via media of Gurudev. To teach us how to cross over all obstacles and transcend this world and go to Goloka Vrindavan. To pray Mamai Seva from see Krishna there. So, our consciousness is turned away from Krishna. The only way to turn it back is to accept the shelter of Sri Guru with the vision. Guru Dev is Krishna Rupa. He's a Vaishnava, but this is one form of Krishna also, Krishna Rupa. And very attentively listen and serve by one's body, mind, words, pran and whole life to Guru Dev. And then, our consciousness has turned and now is focused on Krishna. So, Sri Vigraha Radhana Nityanana Singara Tan Vandira Marjanado Yuktasya Bhaktang Chaitni Yujatopi Vande Guru Sri Chayanaramena. I bow down to Gurudev because he is engaged in serving Vigraha every day, bathing, massaging decorating, doing puja, offering arti, singing kirtans and prayers. And he's engaging all the devotees in those services also. Now, someone may say, I will take a stone and carve it and it will be God. This will not work. Only Krishna, Ambakta Prahadi no Yashvatanta Rivatuja, Sadhu Bhagavatam, Bhakti and Bhakti Janapriya. Krishna said, I am controlled by the love of my devotee. 
I am subordinate to my devotee. They have seized my heart. And they are so dear to me, they are so dear to me that even someone who is dear to them becomes dear to me. Also. So by serving Sri Guru who is dear to Krishna, we also become dear to Krishna. So one can only serve Bigraha, who, that person who has been Dikshit initiated. In fact, that's the definition of a Vaishnava. Who is a Vaishnava? Do you know the definition? Krahita Vishnu Dikshako Vishnu Puja Paro Nara Vaishnava Vito Bigyat Trasmada Vaishnavaha. Learned persons say that a person who has received Diksha into a Vishnu mantra, a mantra into some form of Krishna or his Vishnu Dattva expansions, and who he is, after receiving that mantra, is absorbed in service to the deity. Vaishnava Obhita Abhigya, learning persons call that person a Vaishnava. Itrasmad Avaishnavaha, and everyone else is a Vaishnava, not a devotee. So, all the possibilities to approach the Supreme Lord come by the mercy of pure Vaishnavas. First, because their frame has controlled the Lord, if they will carve a form of Krishna and then pray to Krishna, please come, then Krishna will appear there. And if they will give a Diksha Mantra to a conditioned soul, who is surrendered to them, then uh, that person will quickly become liberated from the bodily conception of life and engaged in the service of the Archa Bigraha, Krishna's transcendental form. So both the appearance of the, in this world of Krishna in the form of Vigraha and the opportunity to serve him, everything comes from the Bhagavad Bhakta. See Krishna's pure devotees. They are the ones who bring great fortune to everyone. There's a very beautiful history of the Vigraha that illustrates the Vigraha Tantra. And that is of Sila Madhavendra Puri. Perhaps you know that after Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu accepted the renounced order of life. He wanted to go to Vrindavan, but Dintyananda tricked him and brought him to Shantipura. Nityanarabhu sent some devotees, oh, go and bring Sachimata. And with great respect, carrying on a palanquin, they brought Sachimata from Mayapur Navadvip to Shantipura, to Advaita the chariot house. And Sachimata said, Oh, Vrindavan is so far away. But Navadvipa and Jagannath Puri are like two rooms in the same house. Because pilgrims from are uh, always going from Navadvipa to Puri to see Jagannath and pilgrims from Puri are always coming to Navadvipa to have darshan and bathe in Ganga. So if you will go there, then you can sometimes come and take bath in Ganga and I will see you and Sometimes pilgrims will go back and forth and I'll receive news from you. So on the request of his mother, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu decided I'll go to Nilachal. Shri Ketra Mandal Jagannath Puritham. Vipalamba Ketra. The Dham of separation. The place of Lord Jagannath. So Advaita Charya. He told four devotees they should accompany him on his journey. Nityananda Prabhu, Jagadananda Pandit, Tamadar Pandit and Mukunda Datta. So from Shantipur, Mahabhu set out on foot, going to Jagannath Puri with his four very ecstatic associates. All the way they were chanting the holy name. Krishna Hare Krishna Krishna 
was wandering, wandering around Giraj Govardhan, and gradually he came to Govinda Kund. So there, Sir Madhavendra Puri, he took bath in Govinda Kund, and then he sat down in the lap of Giraj Govardhan on the bank of Govinda Kund, and he was chanting. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, in great, in great bliss, for a long time, he was not eating, he was fasting completely, but he's not aware, is it time for prasada, he doesn't know. Generally, renounced persons, they go and they beg alms. We just discovered how Mahaprabhu was begging at the, from the village, villages on the way to Ramuna. But he never begged for, for anything. If someone would come and give him something, then he would take it. Otherwise, he never thought about hunger, thirst, or tiredness, or anything. So, Madhavan the Puru was there chanting. One very beautiful boy, village boy, approached him. The boy said, Hey, Puri, <laughs> what are you doing? Why are you fasting? Hmm? Madam and the Puri said, Who are you? And how do you know I was fasting? <laughs> that little boy said, I am a Gopa. I am a Gopa, coward boy. And I live in this village here. And the ladies who come to this kund to collect water, they noticed you. And they noticed that for a long time you didn't eat anything. And so they gave me this pot of milk. So I have brought this pot of milk for you. Take it. And he put it down in front of Madhavan and the priest. So then, he said, mm, take it. But then put it He said, I will come back later and I will collect the pot from you when you finish everything. And then that boy just went away and where did he go? But then the boy could not understand how he was, where he went. So then, Madhavan the Puri was chanting. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. But the boy didn't come back. He was chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare And then it was getting very late, the night was passing, and by the arrangement of Yoga Maya, he fell asleep. But then, in his dream, he saw that that beautiful boy had come back again. Huh? Oh, Puri! And he took him by the hand and he led him uh, across Govind, uh, along the side of Govind and he to just the one place named Oyabai. And he said, I am inside this kunj. It was a very dense kunj. He said, mm, I was established by Bajranab. So that means four and a half thousand years before. The great grandson of Krishna, after Krishna disappeared, came to Braja. And uh, he uh, established deities of Krishna, like Adi Keshav in Mathura, mm, Balaram in in the in the village of Dalji, in the village of Baldev, and Govinda, Gopinath, Madan Mohan, Gopeshwar Mahadev, and other deities. And one was Sri Gopal, Sri Gopal, established by Vajranab, thousands of years before. So that boy said to Madan, I'm in there. Many years before, because the Malachas, the barbarians were coming, smashing the deities. So the Pujari became afraid and he hid me in the bushes here and he fled. But he never came back and now I've been here, I am very hot 
and very itchy. So you should go and get some villages and cut through the jungle here and take me out and establish me on the top of the hill. And you should bathe me in many, many pots of cooling water because I've become so hot. And I'm very uncomfortable. So then, that boy disappeared. Madhavanda Puri suddenly woke up. And he began to cry. He was weeping. He still hadn't taken the milk yet. Now he took the milk and he was in ecstasy. <laughs> He was crying, alas! Not only in the dream, but while I was awake, Krishna came. But I did not recognize him. Uh, how is that? You think he is? This is not believable. Uh, this is the power of yoga, man. Hmm? Now you are oh, worshipping Krishna, chanting his name every day. If someone asks you, Krishna is too Bhagavan Swaya. Krishna is supreme personality, you got it. But by the influence of Yogamaya, when you are in Goloka Vrindavan and you see Krishna, you think he is the son of Nanda Maharaj. You have no idea that he is Bhagavan. It is Yogamaya that makes our relation with Krishna. Just as Mahamaya also makes our relation in this world with people. No one is your mother, no one is your father, no one is your brother, your sister or anything hmm? in this material world. All our souls being born again and again and again. Hmm? But Mahamaya is making these temporary relations. In the spiritual world, Yogamaya makes the relations. But they are real. Why? They are forever. Hmm? So, by the influence of Yoga Maya, even while Madhavendapri was awake and he was chanting Krishna, but Krishna came before him and he was astonished, he was attracted by the boy's beauty, but he didn't recognize him. But now he realized. And he was crying in separation. Hmm? How do you get relief from separation? Service. So Madhavanapuri, now the night was over and he went into the village. And he said he called all the villages around. He said that the Ishwara of this village, the Lord of this village, is living nearby in a very dense thicket, in a kunj. So please bring some tools and help me take him out. So then the villagers came with Madhavanapuri and they began to cut through the hard thickets and they went through into a kunj and there they were amazed and they saw the deity of Shri Gopa oh covered in dust and grass and straw and completely neglected so he was very heavy so some of the stronger ones came and along with Manavendapuri they carried him up to the top of Giraj Govardhan and they put one big stone there for the base and they put him on there and they put another big stone behind to support. And then Madhavendra Puri, finally he said, oh, bring, bring water. So they brought water and they washed uh, Gopal. And then Madhavendra Puri Pai massaged him with fragrant oils. Then Madhavendra Puri Pai told everyone, oh, make so many preparations. And they all cooked oh, hundreds of preparations. And they bought Panchagavya and Panchamrita. You no, know, Panchagavya means five substances from the cow. Milk, yogurt, ghee, cow dung and cow urine. Mm -hmm. And then Panchamrita, milk, yogurt, ghee, and sugar and honey. These five things. So everything was collected together and they bought 900 pots of water. And under the guidance of Madhavendra Puri, they did the Anukut Mahotsava. Madhavendra Puri massaged him again with oil and bathed him in the Panchagavya and the Panchamrita and the 900 uh, kalashis full of uh, water from Govindakund. And then again he massaged with oil and again they bathed with the water from a conch shell. 
And then they decorated and the news was traveling everywhere. In Mathura, there are many rich, wealthy persons in Mathura. They came bringing oh, gold and silver ornaments, flutes and crowns and ankle bells and bangles and necklaces. So Gopal was decorated with beautiful ornaments and flowers. He looked so beautiful. Then they bought all the preparations. And Madam and the Puri then the whole the hill, top of Govardhan Hill was covered. We don't do it on the top, we do ours at the bottom. But in the same place. Mm -hmm. When we do this Anakut Mahotsa. The top of Govardhan Hill was covered with preparations. And Madam and the Puri part, he uh, recited the mantras and prayed, O oh, Krishna. And they said all the matters and offered the, the bog to Sri Krishna. And the others they saw he was offering, but Madhavan the Puripad saw how Krishna was actually taking. Hmm? The Supreme Lord is Ulangita Triveda Simha. He is beyond the limitation of time and space and the mind. He is hidden by Maya. No one can see him or understand him. But his devotees who have love, then for them he cannot hide. Abda Lokayite Krishna Narayat Kare. Krishna tries to hide himself. But Tada Pita Harabata Jane Tari. But those who have love for him, they always catch him. He cannot hide from them. So though the other people saw how we put the, the bog on the hill and he rang the bell and chanted some mantras and, and everything is still there. But Madhavan the Puri saw how Gopal he was so hungry after being in that bush for so many years without anyone serving him. So Madhavendra Puri Pai saw how Krishna was eating everything. Right hand, left hand also. <laughs> Don't eat with your left hand. But he's a Gopal. Um, he can do it. So Madhavendra Puri Pai was in ecstasy. Realizing how Gopal is receiving all the preparations. And everyone who was there, they thought, oh, it is by the mercy of Madhavendra Puri the pastime of Anukut Mahotsav that Krishna conducted at Govardhan with Nanda Maharaj and all the bridge buses four and a half thousand years before. Now Madhavendra Puri has caused that very pastime to manifest in front of our eyes. So the news spread everywhere. Every village in Braj said, we also want to make Anukut Mahotsav. Every village in Braj wanted to make the Anukut Mahotsav. So Madhavan Puri made a schedule, a calendar, and every day for several months it was this village on this day, this village on another day, this everyone was coming, and again, massage, abhishek, decorations, boga all over the hill, <laughs> Gopal eating everything, Madhavan Puri seeing everything, uh, every day. Because um, those were Brajavasis in those times, today also. Some, but not so much today. But bridge buses, they are naturally, by their swabha, inclined to love Krishna. And Krishna is inclined to love his bridge buses also. So every day, for months, it was an ecstatic festival. And every village in Braj donated one, every family, sorry, not village, every family in Braj donated one cow. So you can imagine. So now, Gopal had so many cows also to take care of. And uh, some wealthy person uh, constructed a temple. Some others came and made a wall around the garden of the temple. And uh, some, there were some uh, renounced Brahmanas, two renounced Brahmanas from Bengal. They were in Parikrama and they came to Govardhan. And they are very uh, inspired by Madhavan Puri and Gopal. So Madhavan Puri initiated them, they became his disciples and he engaged them 
as the full-time pujaris. So at once, the uh, center of Krishna Bhakti was manifested, full of life. Every, always festivals, Mahaprasada, Kirtan, cows, beautiful, all by the mercy of Madhavanta Puri. And this service was going on in a beautiful way for two years. And then, after two years, Madhavanta Puri, one night in a dream, that boy came to him again. He said, I am still very hot. I am still hot. I didn't cool down yet. So I want you to bring me Malaya of Chandan, sandalwood, which comes from the Malaya hills. Very, very, in South India, very, very fragrant, cooling sandalwood paste. He said, so you should go, go to Jagannath Puri and from there you can get the, this Malaya Chandan. And then you smear it all over my body and it will cool me down. So when Madhavanta Puri boy woke up, he was very inspired. Oh, now I have to do this service. And he set off. He's an old man. No cars, no trains, no planes. On foot, walking hundreds and hundreds of kilometers. He came. But on his way to Puri, just like when Mahaprabhu was on his way to Puri, he came from Advaita Charya's house in Shantipur, Bengal, to Ramuna, which Mahaprabhu is telling this history in Ramuna. So similarly, Srila Madhavanda Puripad came through Bengal and on his way he also came to Shantipur. So this is, you know, two generations before Mahaprabhu. Because this is Mahaprabhu's guru's guru. So at that time Advaita Charya was very young. His name was Kamala Kanta Veda Panchana. Mm -hmm. And uh, that younger Grihastha welcomed the Sanyasi Madhavendra Puri to his home. And he was very inspired by the prema of Madhavendra Puri and begged him for initiation. And Madhavendra Puri initiated. So Advaita Charya is a disciple of Madhavendra Puri. And then from there, Madhavendra Puri continued. And he came to the village of Arumuna. And he had darshan of the deity of Gopinath there. And the, he saw the Pujaris, they were making beautiful preparations and carrying them and, and bringing them into the, to the temple room to offer to Gopinath. One of the Pujaris said, Oh, we make for Gopinath every day a special kind of kheer, a condensed milk. This preparation is called Amrita Keli. You know, Radha Rani actually makes Amrita Keli for Krishna. She goes and cooks it in Madhya Shorda's kitchen. Uh, so we make this delicious preparation called Amrita Keli. And uh, the Gopinath's Amrita Keli Mahaprasad is famous in the, all around this Orissa, Utkal. So Madhavanta Puri, he thought, hmm, when the, after Gopinath is taken, then I would like to uh, taste this. And uh, by tasting it, I'll understand how to prepare it for my Gopal at Govardhan. But the problem is this, the next moment he realized, oh, I just in my mind had the desire to taste the bog before it was offered. So then he criticized himself. Oh, Shri Vishnu, Shri Vishnu, Shri Vishnu. I have made a terrible mistake. And he left. He came out of the temple and he, he went from the temple to the village, to the marketplace, to the square there. And he sat down and he was chanting. So the Pajari, they make every day 12 pots. And he put the 12 pots in, in front of um, uh, Gopinath. And then he uh, rang the bell and said the mantras, then he went outside because Gopinath would take it. Then he came back in and then he collected them again and then he took the Mahaprasad uh, out for distribution. After doing this service, then the Pajari, he took some prasadam and then he took some rest. 
So while he was resting, Gopinath came to him in a dream. He said, oh, my devotee, Madhavendra Puri is here. So when you came to collect the offering, I bewildered you by my maya. You thought you bought 12 and took away 12, but you bought 12 and took away 11. And one pot, I have hid it behind the curtain, behind my curtain. And I have kept this for Madhavendra Puri. Go and give it to him. So then, that Pujari, he was sleeping and he woke up. And he went into the temple room, opened the doors, looked inside and looked behind the curtain where Gopinath had indicated in the dream. And there it was. One pot of Kheer, Amrita Kelly. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Understand? Those who will serve Bigra with, with love, they will experience transcendental divine loving relationship. So he took that pot of care and he went out to the marketplace and was calling, Who is Madhavanda Puri? Who is Madhavanda Puri? You are the most fortunate person in the world. <laughs> Gopinath has stolen some gear for you. Madhavanda <laughs> Puri, hmm? what, what's going, who's calling my name? He said, I am Madhavanda Puri. Hmm? So then the Pujari said, this is for you. Gopinath stole it for you. And the Pujari gave that and pronounced. <laughs> <laughs> so then, Madhavanda Puri, he was overwhelmed with ecstasy. All his hairs were standing on end. Tears were flowing from his eyes. When the Pujari saw him, he couldn't believe the ecstatic symptoms. In fact, all the Pujaris and all the Brahmins came and seen his ecstatic symptoms, they all gave pronouns. I said, Jai Gurudev. They all wanted to take a diksha from him. And he says, So, Madhavendapur, he tasted that kya. And then, after honoring the kia, he kept the pot. He broke it into pieces and he wrapped it in the corner of his cloth. And every day he would eat a little piece of the pot. He would get indigestion if he eat the whole pot in one day. <laughs> so he broke the pot into small pieces every day. He would have a little bit. <sighs> Remembering the, the love of Gopinath. So from that day, Mapu said that uh, Gopinath became known as Kir Chora Gopinath. The Gopinath who stole the gear from Madhavendra Puri. So then, Madhavendra Puri, he was thinking, Oh, if I stay in this village, then tomorrow thousands and thousands of people will come. So he did not like Pratishta. Nowadays, everyone wants to be famous somehow for at least five minutes. <laughs> Everyone's trying to film themselves and upload their own pictures and videos to get some fame. So Vaishnavas, they have no interest in any worldly fame. So Madhavendra Puri was running away from Pratishta. But just as the materialistic person is running after Pratishta, uh -huh. but even if he gets the Pratishta, the, the, the fame, the reputation, but the fame of a materialistic person smells like the excrement of a pig. Hmm? It is uh, disgusting. Hmm? It has, does no good to those who smell it and no good for the person who is covered in it. <laughs> but the transcendental fame of a Vaishnava is glorious hmm? and benefits the whole world. So, the materialistic person is running after Pratishta. But the Vaishnava Madhavanta Puri was running away from Pratishta. But Pratishta was running after him. <laughs> hey, come back! I want to serve you. Transcendental fame. So, Madhavanta Puri continued on his way to Jagannath Puri. And when he arrived there, he had darshan of Lord Jagannath. Jai Jagannath! Jai Jagannath!
people of Jagannath Puri, they surrounded Madhavanda Puri because his fame traveled so fast, it arrived there before he did. <laughs> uh, oh, this is the person, Gopinath from Ramuna, stole the gear for him. We should all get his mercy. So in this way, it was very helpful for Madhavanda Puri because he said, actually, the reason I have come here is because my Gopal in Brindavan asked me to collect from Puri some chanda, uh, Malaya, Malaya uh, chanda, sandwood paste from the Malaya hills and camphor, because that should also be mixed with it and it's very cooling. So then all, all the Brahmins there and others and wealthy persons, yes of course, whatever you want. And they got about 38 kilos of chanda. <laughs> And uh, it's a block of camphor also. And uh, they gave him one brahmin and one servant also to help him carry all this chandan. And they also gave him some papers. Because if you are poor and you are traveling, it's not a problem. But in those days, every road, every river, every district and state had many, many tolls and taxes. And you could not carry any valuable goods from one place to another without sharing, without getting some tax. So he was given all the documents and papers so that he could carry it without being uh, impeded. So from Puri, Srila Madhavanda Puri set off again and on his way back he arrived again in Ramuna. So there in Ramuna he stayed the night and in a dream, his Gopal from Vrindavan said to him, Oh, I have already received the chandan. Hmm? That means, Madhavendra Puri has brought the chandan to Gopinath. That means he's already brought the chandan to Gopal. Because that Gopal, the lifter of Govardhan Hill and Gopinath, they're not two persons. This hmm? Vigraha, that Vigraha is Satchitananda Vigraha Krishna. Same Krishna. So Gopal told him, I am the same, I am Gopinath, Gopinath is me, Gopal. So you should uh, grind up this chanda and smear me in this chanda every day until oh, it's all finished. And then I, my body will become cool and refreshed again. So then the mother and the body, he woke up and along with the Brahmin Pujaris there, they began to grind the sandalwood paste and every day they smeared the body of Gopinath with that sandalwood paste. And, uh, and it took a long time, but gradually it was all used up, it was all done. And you can, if you go to Ramuna today, you can see that the Samadhi of Madhavendra Puri is there. Mahasama. Have you been, who's been to Ramuna? Love 
All their only consideration is how will Krishna be pleased? They never have any consideration for their own problems or difficulties at all. This is the standard of love of Mother and And Mahaprabhu said, in his final days in this world, Madhavand Puri recited a verse over and over and over again. Hmm? What was that verse? Ayi Dina Dayada Natahe Mathur Nata Kadava Lakshase Ridyam Tvada Loka Kataram Daita Brahmati Kim Karomyaham Mahaprabhu said to Nityananda Prabhu and the other associates. He said, this verse, among many verses which are like jewels, this jewel is not a sparshamani, a touchstone that can turn everything to gold. Not a chintamani, the stone that can fulfill all desires. This, this verse, among jewel-like verses, is the kostubamani. Krishna's own jewel that he wears on his own heart. Mahabhu said this verse is like chanda. That means the more you rub chanda, the more the fragrance comes out. So in the same way, the more you deliberate upon this verse, then the more the rasa, transcendental rasa comes out. Indeed, Krishna's Karaj Goswami part said, No fourth person has tasted the depth of the rasa in this verse. No fourth person. Why? Because one, it was not composed by Madhavendra Puri, these are Radharani's words. And by Radharani's mercy, these words appeared in the heart of Madhavendra Puri. So Radharani was the first person to relish it. Madhavendra Puri person was, part was the second person to relish it. And Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was the third person. There's no fourth person who has fully relished this verse. So Mahaprabhu, he recited this verse. And as soon as he uttered it, Mahaprabhu fainted. Nityanabhu caught him. He was unconscious in the lap of Nityanabhu. After some time, Mahaprabhu came back to external consciousness. And he was looking around. And he got up and he was running around. And crying. And calling out. He could not recite the whole verse. He was only calling, Aideen, Aideen, Aideen. Again and again. He became mad. So this verse will explain tomorrow. Chila Madhavan Dupuri Pada Ki Jai Gauri Ki Jai Now you understand Bigra Tattva. Deity is Krishna himself. Mahu said Yaha Prima Vashamaya Prakata Vila Seva Angi Karakari Jagadatarila. The meaning is Jaha Prema Vashavhiya Pakatahila. How did it happen that that, that Sri Nathji, who was lost for thousands of years, was manifest? Yaha Prema Vashavhiya because he was manifest, because he was forced to manifest by the love of Madhavanda Puri. This is Vikrata. The deity appears in this world before us because of the love of his devotee, controls him and brings him here. Seva Ahyukari Kari Jagata Torila. And incidentally, when he appears, being brought before the eyes of the world by the love of a great Vaishnava, he, Seva Angi Karikari, accepts service and by accepting that service he can deliver everyone in the universe. The 
is Vigraha Tattva. So Vigraha can be served in our check mark according to Vidhi, rules and regulations. Uh, that is called Archan, actually, Upuja. Or it can be served in Raga Mark. That is not called Archan, Upuja, that is called Seva. Bigger has Seva. There's a difference. What is the difference? That we'll discuss tomorrow. Uh, the meaning of this verse and the difference between. Uh, you see, because a, a general person, they can go and serve Sri Nasji or Gopinath. Hmm? With all mantras, all the rituals. But Madhavanta Puri bought some Brahmanas and they became his disciples. He engaged them in the worship and he was doing the mm, Seva, Prema Moye Seva. Through the medium of this verse and his other Bhav Moye Sevas. Shri Madhavanta Puri Parki Jai, Shri Vikrahatatva Ki Jai,